Now, there's a lot of methods that are useful for list. So there's append, which is if you want to expand a list, that adds a list, a new item to the end of the list. So let's go back to idle, and let's see what we have in, in uh, let's see, we're playing with y, I think. Yeah, y is one, two, three. So if we say y dot append, and let's append the number six. So this is actually the uh, syntax for calling a method. So we said there's an interface to uh, objects. So y is a list, and there's an interface that has all of these, uh, a lot of methods defined. So append is a method, so it appends six. It doesn't return anything, but if we now look at y, it's modified the list and added a new item. So that's a pen. We can also insert into the middle of a list. So it inserts an item at the ith position of the list. So let's see, 0, 1, 2. So 3 is at the, the second position of the list. So let's say y dot insert, uh, and we'll say insert minus 1. It'll really stand out. Oops. Uh, I, so when you do insert, you need two things. You need the position and what you're inserting. So let's do that again. So we're at the position is uh, three, or yeah, uh, we want to insert it where the three is, which is four, and then a minus one, and then we'll look at it, and you can see that uh, zero, one, two, so four became what's in position minus the four, the minus one, is at zero, one, two, three, four at position four, so it replaced the old position. Uh, what was it for? So insert. Now pop removes and returns the last item to the list. So let's look at this list again. Uh, y. And then we're going to say uh, y dot pop has no parameters. And you'll notice it removes the last thing from the list and returns it, so it returns a 6. If we look at the list, it, it's missing the 6 now. So that's pop. There's pop i, which takes a parameter, and it pops and removes the ith item of the list. So it removes something from the middle of the list. So if we say y dot uh, pop uh, the second item, which is the 2, it's going to return the 2. Oh, it's going to return the number 2 item, which is actually the 3. And then when we look at the list now, the three will be gone, and it's closed up its area. Uh, there's sort, which will sort a list. So let's do y dot dot sort. And you notice it doesn't return anything, and that's because it modifies the original list. So if we look at y now, it's sorted from smallest to largest. And there's reverse, uh, which puts it in reverse order. And you can see it's in reverse order. Uh, you can delete an item in the list. So it's like pop, but doesn't return the value. So it does the same thing. And you notice this is different than these calls. This is actually an operator. You say delete. You have some uh, list, and you say the index you want to delete. So this is a special operator rather than a method. Uh, so let's delete uh, in the list y the, let's see, the first element. Well, let's do the second element, which would be 1. So that should delete the 4. And then we look at the list, and you see the 4 is gone. Uh, then there's uh, index. This searches a list for an item and returns the index number of it. So let's search for 1. So we say uh, y dot index and find where is 1 at. And it says it's at index 2. And then there's count, returns the number of occurrences of an item. So let's append uh, to the list first a duplicate value of 2. Look at the list. So you see there's two twos. So now we're going to say the list count how many twos are in it. And let's say there's, there's two of them. And uh, then there's uh, list remove item. This finds the first item that matches this and then removes it from the list. So let's remove the first two. And 
and then we'll look at it and you can see the first two is gone and it, but the last two is still there. So these are a bunch of methods uh, except for this one which isn't a method, the delete operator. Uh, and a method works like in Java and C++. If you have an object, you say that object period and then the name of the method and then it has parameters. So it's also like a function call but you always specify what the object is that it's working on. So they do, they test all these and they show you how it works here. So you can also interact in the book and run all these. And you notice here, since we're not in idle, after they do something, they print the list out again. So they do inserts or pops and they print the list. And when they pop something, since it returns a value, they print the list. So this is what you might put in your code. Now you'll see some of the methods such as pop return a value and also modify the list. Others, like reverse, simply modify the list with no return value. Uh, there's a name for this. Methods that uh, do not modify the original object are, are, are called immutable methods. And objects that modify the, the object are called mutable. We'll get into that later. Um, now, the add operator, there's other methods that are very special in that almost every object you can add methods uh, and define your own like underscore underscore add and these are methods that if you define them then the plus operator will also work for that list and this just points out that numbers are actually objects so if you want to add do the equivalent of a one plus two which gives us three you can also do it this way you can say parentheses one which makes an object, uh, refer to it as an object, and then you say underscore, underscore add. So we're calling the method for the integer ob object, and we'll pass it a two, and it does the same thing. And it's fact, uh, when we get into designing our own classes, we're gonna design a, a fraction class. We're gonna use define our own f uh, method that's underscore, underscore, add, underscore, underscore. And it will end up uh, uh, making our object be able to use the plus operator. Um, now, one last thing we're going to talk about is the range function. The range function, uh, if I just say range, and I hit left print, it says I can do a range with uh, a variable and it's going to create a range object. And if I do that, uh, like range of 10, what it's going to do is basically create a, 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 a sequence of numbers from 0 up to and including, but not including 10. So it's kind of like the for statement in, in uh, Java and C++. Now if I hit enter, it just returns a range object. So when you say range of 10, it actually creates an object. But the way you use this, if I convert, this is how you convert something to a list. I'll say list range of 10. And I get a, a list that goes from 0 to 9. And the other way you can do range is with two parameters. I want a range that starts at 5 and goes up to 1 less than 10. Uh, so if I do a list of that, you'll see it starts at 5 and goes up to 9. And you can also do a range. Now let's assign it to a variable. So I'll say r1 is equal to range. And we'll start at 0 and go up to 25. But we're going to skip 5 at a time. So it's going to go 0, and then it's going to add 5. So it'll do 0, 5, 10 up to but not including 25. So that creates the range and now we'll say list of R1 and uh, you can see that it steps by that amount. So it has the start, the end, but not up to but not including the end, and the step. Now range is going to be really important when we do loops we're going to see a uh, range gives us the equivalent of a for loop with a little bit more syntax. We'll do that later. Uh, so that's the end of this segment. Um, and our, our next thing, um, 
we're going to talk about a little bit more about strings and how they can also be uh, interpreted as sequences.